many years ago. Which recalls those happy days of long ago When I stood at mother's knee With her hand upon my brow And I heard her voice in gentle tones and low Blessed book, precious book On thy dear children dear how he suffered bled and died upon the tree of his heavy load of care then she dried my flowing tears with her kisses as she said it was for me blessed book Precious book on thy dear old. Heals everything from broken leg 
to a broken heart. She is to able to function on four hours of sleep and cold leftovers. And she is supposed to have six pairs of hands. Six pairs of hands, said the angel. That's impossible. It's not six pairs of hands that bother me, said the Lord. It's the three pairs of eyes. She's supposed to have one pair that sees through the closed door. So that whenever she says, what are you doing there, kids? She already knows what they're doing in there. The another pair is for the back of her head because she needs to see all the things that she is not supposed to see. And then she's supposed to have a third pair of eyes in front of her that whenever her child makes a mistake, goofs up, she can communicate love and understanding without a word. This story illustrates this circle of love that mothers create for their children. And we know that although this is a fictional story, it does illustrate how hard it is to be a mother, especially a Christian mother. Now, this particular difficulty of being a Christian mother is weighing on me today very much. For one reason is I did have only four hours of sleep last night. Another reason is that I have a cute two and a half year old in the back who keeps waving me. So if you see me wave back, just ignore it. Uh, but there was few more surprises that I was not expecting for, you know, preaching today. For one, I realized somebody changed my name and I'm not Mira Jacob, apparently I'm Peter Jacob today. But the biggest surprise of all was that Jonathan Rowe actually good, took a good chunk of my sermon in his celebrating the motherhood. So what I wanted to use as part of the sermon, he already used it to honor mothers. Now I have to say, uh, well, two things. First, we are definitely going to pray before I start my sermon because, you know, I kind of have to fill the time and go, God knows how I will do that. But the second thing that I was actually um, stricken by is that I realized that basically my sermon was told before I even start preaching my sermon. I wanted to talk about circle of love that each of us have to have today and in all our lives. And Jonathan Rowe actually managed to create that in all our lives here today. I saw one of the women here in the, um, our midst who God didn't bless by giving the birth to a child. She looked at Jonathan and during the, the program and service kind of lipped and said, thank you. And I'm really touched that even though I did have all the surprises, God is putting everything together, and above all, He is circling you with His love. So, um, let us pray before I start. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for being around us and circling us with your love, for giving us this church that has awareness of all us who are mothers in one way or another, whether through joys or through disappointments, whether through giving to the child that we gave birth to or giving to the children that are our friends or our relatives. I'm thanking you for creating this special sense of care and love today. And I'm asking you to use me as a vessel to maybe Add a few more um, words of encouragement, your words of encouragement through me, God, to the people today in the church. 
I'm asking this in Jesus' name. Amen. So now we're going to do something very interesting for all of you who are hungry. We are going to skip a good number of slides. If this works. Here we go. We, if I am not actually managed to do that, we have to skip till about seven or eight slides till we um, get to Bible verses. Just keep on going. Yes. So how I wanted to approach today a topic of motherhood is actually to tell, celebrate the, uh, the motherhood as it presents uh, God's love. And there is lots of verses in the Bible who support this idea, uh, and we are going to read some of them. So Isaiah 66, 13 says, As a mother comforts her ch child, so will I comfort you. The next verse says, can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child that she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. So God is saying, yes, mother's love is supposed to show what my love looks like. But even if it doesn't, I will come through to, for you and I will circle you with my love. Now, I don't think motherhood is specifically for females. I think the care of the children is also, uh, the, the father's care for the children is also the way how God communicates his love. So another verse says, You, Lord, are our father. So God is teaching us that he is our father who cares for, cares for us and protects us. And the last verse says, When Israel was a child, I loved him. And this is God speaking. It was I who taught Ephraim to walk, taking them by the arms. So there is this caring, loving parent who is walking a child and teaching him to walk in this world. So there is a um, you know, big question, what love is? Uh, and I would like to share some of the research around that. If I can have the next slide, please. Uh, John Bowlby is a famous British uh, child psychiatrist and psychoanalyst, and he is attributed to the perfect, thank you to the creation of theory of attachment. So what is attachment? Attachment is defined as a strong, affectionate tie we have with special people in our lives that lead us to experience pleasure when we interact with them and also to be comforted by near nearness in times of stress. So attachment is basically another word for love. We are attached to, we love our parents, our friends, our children, our partners. So what is it that Balbi believed and that he kind of discovered? Well first, and if you can notice his years, he started working around uh, when Sigmund Freud starts building his theory. So the first thing that Bobby taught that it's different than it was believed at that time was that it is normal for people to meet another people throughout the whole life span. He also argued that both infants and parents are biologically predisposed to form attachment. In other words, he said that babies are born they are equipped with behaviors like crying, cooing, babbling, smiling, clinging, sucking, following, that help ensure that adults love them and stay with them in the times of their needs. He further argued that adults are biologically programmed to respond to an infant signal. 
He considered the first three years as a sensitive period of attachment. And he also believed that formation and security of attachment is influenced by ongoing interaction between infant and a caregiver and by the ability of caregivers to respond to baby's signal. So it's not based on one event, that whether mother um, nursed the child or whether ma mother uh, stay home with a child in the first three years. It's the many, many, many events between the relationship with the, between the caregiver and the child that actually establish that bond of attachment. Finally, Paul, we believe that quality of early attachment influence further relationships that we have with friends, our romantic uh, partners, and even our own children. Now, Bolbe's research was primarily focused on mother-child relationship. However, later research showed that its attachment to the father or any other significant caregiver, being a grandmother or a foster parent or a step-parent, whoever is actually taking care of a child, plays a significant role in building the attachment for uh, a, ch a person. There was also later studies about adult attachment that I will kind of uh, make parallels to. So according to Wolby, there was four distinguished characteristics of attachment. First one is proximity maintenance, which is the desire to be near of the people that we are attached to. So we all know that you know children tend to follow us and be around us. But we also see that in adults. If I would ask any one of you, if you know when you have a day off or you have a you know free time, who do you want to spend time with? You will tell me the name of the people that you love, the name of the people that you are attached to. You like spend time with the people that love you and that you love them. Another characteristic of attachment is safe haven. When children are not in distress or not together with their parents, they show the signs of distress. They either cry or, or uh, scream or maybe stomp. They somehow let us know that they don't, you know, they need us. Adults also show the signs of separation anxiety, although maybe they are not so overt. There is a sign of distress right now. So when I say goodbye to my husband every July when he goes to the camp meeting, I'm not the happiest person in the world. And when I have to go to work and leave Jonathan at daycare, again, I'm not the happiest person in the world. So we have this uh, distress or discomfort that we all feel when we are not in the presence of the people that we uh, love and care. The third characteristic of attachment is secure base. So secure base is the, uh, the attachment figure, so a parent or a partner acts as a base of security from which the child can explore the surrounding environment. So in other words, if the child knows that you will be there for them, they can then play and go and explore. And it's interesting if you would, let's say, go on a playground and have the wet paint on the child's uh, foot and shoes, you will kind of see the child going out and coming back, right? They go out and explore and then they come. Whether they want to share what they discovered or they want to comfort, but they kind of do those circles. They're kind of touching base with the secure base and making sure, are you still there? Are you still watching me? You know, sometimes it's not going to be so visible. They might be from the distance and just checking you. It's like Jonathan, you know, kind of checks me. Are your mommy are you still around? <laughs> um, and the same thing we do as, as adults. How many of us, you know, send text messages or, or uh, give a phone call to our partners or check the Facebook or Twitter or whichever way emails we connect with our closed ones, 
we kind of, you know, go and do our work and then we kind of check, are you all okay? We are okay, a relationship is okay, okay. I can continue to do my work. And the final characteristic of attachment is separation distress. So uh, when we uh, are not, I think I, sorry, made a mistake. Um, when we are in distress, which I already talked about, then we tend to uh, go to safe haven. Uh, we turn to our loved ones for comfort and support. So these are the four characteristics of um, attachment that I will kind of build on as we go along. Now, there are different ways how children attach to their parents, and it can be, uh, depends on various things. The person who actually discovered those different ways is Mary Ainsworth. She actually is, we can consider her Canadian a little bit because she studied at the University of Toronto and did lots of the research from there too. So she created the experiment, which is called Strange Situation, and she discovered three different styles of attachment, and later another researcher discovered the fourth one. So what are those styles of attachment? They can be uh, grouped in two basic groups, secure ones and insecure. 70% of us have a secure attachment with a person that cares for us, with a caregiver and 30% of us have insecure attachment. Under the secure attachment, it's again very simple, secure attachment to um, a caregiver. And under the insecure, we have three groups. It's avoidant or dismissive, anxious or preoccupied, and disorganized or fearful. Now, these studies were done uh, in probably early 50s, sorry, 60s, 70s. So we have a research for about 70, 80, 50, 60 years, um, and they were done in a different culture, and they kind of come with the same results. So it's generally considered that if the child has a secure attachment to adult, uh, the caregiver, um, that's considered as a healthy and it's considered as a positive and insecure attachment has uh, its own negative sides to it. Now, to make it this a um, little bit more concrete for some of you, um, this is the, the some characteristics that uh, people with secure or insecure attachment have. So the characteristics of caregivers is that he or she reacts quickly and positively to child's need, responsive is to child's need, and then the child in return is, he is distressed when caregiver leaves, but he or she is happy when the caregiver re returns and seek comfort for a caregiver when scared or sad. Insecure attachment is created by caregivers who are unresponsive, uncaring, dismissive, respond to the child sometimes and sometimes don't, or they're abusive or neglective, so they kind of respond in frightening or frightened ways. Children who have such caregivers show no signs when the caregiver leaves, when they are, uh, we are considering avoidant attachment. They do not acknowledge return of a caregiver and do not seek or make contact with caregiver. So even though somewhere down they are in distress because the caregiver is not around, they absolutely do not show any signs for asking for a comfort. Ambivalent children do show signs. However, even the, uh, when the caregiver is returned, they are not able to be comforted. And then the disorganized uh, type of attachment uh, they don't have any attaching behavior and they're of, often confused and they, so you will often see the child starts going to a parent but then turns and kind of freezing situation, don't know what to do. Um, to make it this much more simpler, these are the maybe images that can give you a little bit more insights 
in how the secure and insecure attachment look like. And I will uh, give you some more information about characteristics of the children and adults who have secure or insecure attachment. So the children or adults who are secure, they are frightened. When they are frightened, they do seek comfort. Uh, they do prefer parents to strangers, and they are more empathetic and mature in the, nat in the nature. They are less disruptive, that less aggressive. Children who have insecure attachment, whether it's anxious or avoidant, and the third uh, type of insecure attachment is actually a combination of these two. So sometimes they will seek and sometimes they will go away. So it's kind of mixed messages. Those children are extremely su uh, suspicious of strangers. They are not able to be comforted. Uh, over time, they become overly clingy, clingy or dependent. They actually avoid parents and caregiver, and they actually show no preference between a parent or complete stranger. So that in itself tells you how vulnerable these children are. Now, as adults, uh, secure people have uh, ro their romantic love is enduring. They have trusting, loving relationships. They have high self-esteem. They are able to open up to others, so they are aware of their thoughts, their feelings, and their needs. And they are able to communicate them, trusting that the other person will respond and they also seek support when they need it. Um, and then insecure people do the opposite. They don't trust in love, they don't invest in love. They might fall in love often, but they also have breakups often. They are open to casual sex very often. Uh, they don't believe that love actually exists. Uh, they avoid their partners often through uh, work and sometimes they actually cling to children for support rather than um, their partner. Now, how is this, why is this all important to us as Christians? Well, research shows that children and adults who have secure attachment are actually having a much stronger relationship to God. They are committed Christians. Uh, they are faithful Christian, uh, Christians. They also do better at their work and studies as, as students. And they also have a good mental health. So they're less prone to depression, anxiety, and all other um, things. The uh, adults and children who don't have secure attachment have actually um, less stable relationship with God. Uh, they typically struggle in school and they often struggle in mental health. Now, attachment is not something that once you have it, that's it, and you're kind of stuck with that for the rest of your life. The, uh, there, is, there are ways for that, if you had insecure attachment, for that to be changed over time. And there are actually five categories, five uh, groups that um, can help you change your attachment. If you have a good friend who is secure and can provide a secure base and safety for you, 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 you can kind of learn to feel and experience secure attachment. If you have a partner who can provide that for you, Again, you can build and earn the secure attachment. If you have a therapist, that's often what we do with the children and people who are struggling in this area. We provide that safe base for them so they can kind of build that sense of security and then uh, kind of transfer to the other areas of their lives. If you have a social group, like a church, like exactly what we did today, with those flowers and when we acknowledge every single woman and any ways of motherhood that she has experienced good side or a bad side that group
can be a secure base and safe haven for you. And you can build that sense of attachment and then have all those positive uh, outcomes of experience safe attachment. And then the fifth entity is actually God. We can build safe attachment with God and heal our past relationships and kind of help, which can help us to build further relationships on a much healthier base. Um, when I said that earlier, attachment theory was primarily focused on relationship with mom, mother, and a child, lately, attachment theory is actually exploring attachment between adult and God. Um, so if we look to those four, if you remember, characteristics of attachment, proximity maintenance, safe haven, secure base, and separation distress. There are many verses and many uh, ways how God actually creates those um, four characteristics for us. The first one that I would like to talk about is separation distress. Um, we have many uh, scriptures that talk about how hard it is for believers when they feel that God is not in there but for them. But I think the most, um, most prominent one is when actually Jesus, who was one with God, when he experienced that um, separation from God, this is that pain that he, you can clearly see through these words. It says in Matthew 27, 46, about three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And I know that many of us in many ways have cried that, that prayer, God, I really need you. I don't feel close to you. So most of us in those times go to the next steps, uh, characteristics of attachment, it's looking for God. Ellen White says that prayer is the opening of the heart to God as a friend. It brings us up to him. It brings us close to him. Many studies, even secular studies, talk about how special and significant prayer is. Many of researchers cannot explain all the benefits of the prayer, but if we approach the God, to God in any type of distress, in any type of pain or discomfort or wonders or confusion, and we actually open our heart to God as our friend, God is able to provide the healing and God is able to help us in those times. In attachment language, God is able to provide safe haven for us. Ellen White, again, thoughts uh, from the Mount of Blessings says, no, and by, by when she says no, it doesn't mean just no with your head, but no with your heart, and believe the love that God has for us. And it's interesting the words that she uses next. You are secure. You are secure. You do have somebody who loves you, who cares for you, who is looking over you, who is watching over you. That love is a fortress impregnable to all delusions and all assaults of Satan. I believe and I hope that we all had that moment when we pray to God in our hardest times and most difficult times is that we experience kind of like a circle of love that God brought upon us and showed us that he loves and cares for us. Um, God also provides for us a secure base. If you remember, secure base is is sense of that somebody is with us so we can go about our business and, and do what we need to do. In Joshua 1.9 says, be strong and courageous, which are some of the characteristics of the children and people who have that sense of secure attachment. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you 
wherever you go. Another verse says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. In other words, God is saying that by I am providing you a safe base and I am walking with you and I want you to achieve all those amazing things that I have set up for you for your life and you can do that. I will help you to do that. I have all these amazing plans for you and I want you to achieve them. So <clears throat> as we are uh, wrapping up our topic today, um, I want to again highlight the parallel between God's love and mother's love uh, or any or a caregiver's love if we can talk in that, in that way. The caregiver's job is to provide us with that sense of security, that circle of love, that sense of safety that can help us to achieve all the things that God created us to achieve and to do in this life. Unfortunately, some giver, caregivers are not able to do that because of their own past, and sometimes the circumstances of life are such that even though we might have had secure base, somehow down the line we may be lost that sense of security. So God is saying us, to us today that whether you had sense that safety as a child and as an adult, I can be there for you. I can provide that for you. I can do all the things, the attachment, supposed to do for you. It was interesting to me to see as I, as I was preparing this uh, topic that there is lots of uh, ideas of how uh, this, uh, this sense of attachment, need for attachment is actually biologically based. And, and when I looked at that as a Christian, it, what comes to me is like, of course, God created us to have that sense. God created us to build the close relationship with others. God created us to build the close relationship with Him. And if we can do that for, for our children, for our partners, for our friends, and as part of the church, if we can do that for our community, if we can be that sense, safe base and safe haven for the people in this community who, when they come and struggle with different issues, can find the comfort and support and real sense of love, we will do God's job. We will show them God's love. Now, I want to uh, say a few words to each of the groups that we kind of focus today. First one, I again want to talk about talk to the women who, for one reason or another, didn't have a ch had a child and maybe feel you know, maybe I'm not worth of mentioning uh, today, and in some ways maybe I'm not worth even living. I want to tell you that God loves you. God has amazing plans for you. Why the circumstances of, the, of your life are as they are like now, I do not know. But God has plans for you, so lift your head high, walk proudly, because you are God's child, and He loves you, and He has special plans for you. And He will be that comfort for your pain and for the sorrows that you are experiencing through maybe some disappointments in life. For mothers, I want to encourage you to hold on to that mission that God gave you to create the circle of love around your children. Um, there is no greater purpose, there is no higher honor than actually teach the child to that sense of love, not just by you, but also by God. Uh, there is a quote that says, Mothers write on the hearts of their children what the rough hand of the world cannot erase. And we can say fathers or grandmothers or aunties or whoever is there for the children, for the children of our church uh, or the world, 
writes that love and that care and, and that uh, Christian character in their hearts. Uh, last Sabbath, we had children Sabbath. And, and it was amazing to me to see all the children that participated. Uh, it, it's not the, what we seen last Sabbath, it's not just results of maybe few Sabbath school teachers or leaders. It's the results of all the mothers that invest in their child and all the mothers that invest in those adults and parents to teach that and on and on and on. So what we as caregivers do for our children, really rough world cannot erase. Another example of how amazing uh, what we do for our children is, uh, and not many of you uh, are, might be aware of that, but last uh, Sabbath, uh, I had a privilege really to see um, some of the children playing in the mother's room. Um, as some of you might be aware of, we are trying to uh, bring few things uh, in the mother's room and to maybe update a little bit. And part of that was to bring new toys. Now, the reason for new toys, we were aiming for the toys that can be easily cleaned and disinfected so we don't have to worry about some health issues. But you know, for the children, it's a new toy. So there was lots of kid, kids that gather in the room and kind of play with that. And I see the children between probably four till about nine, ten, you know, playing with toys, pulling every single toy, you know. And, you know, you know part of the, the plan for Mother's Room is to kind of organize the cleaning. But right now we are just in the early stages, so I knew it would kind of fell on me to clean the room. And I was thinking to myself, oh, great. <laughs> you know, there will be lots of time that we're going to stay after the church. But to my surprise, a pleasant surprise, when I came back to the church, everything was back on the place. They all put things away. They, they cleaned the room and left the room very clean. Now, maybe that's not a big thing for you, but for me, it's amazing to see how what parents and mothers and fathers and caregivers do for their children, how it reflects things like that. When they're playing and enjoying themselves, they are aware there was no adult in a room. So there was like, you know, 10 children and they kind of organize themselves and clean that. So that in itself, tells me how much this hard work that mothers and caregivers do for the children really does reflect uh, on the children. And then the last message, oh, one of the things that we recognize as a family ministry is that parenting is very hard. So we do wanna uh, offer the training in uh, parenting called Circle of Security. It is based on attachment and we do have some forms for all of you who wanna register for this training. And then you can give those forms to either uh, me or Sabrina uh, in the next couple of weeks so we can find what will be the best time for you to learn that. This is, it is primarily for our parents but we encourage grandparents if they wanna learn about this, by all means, you are welcome to come. This training will probably go for uh, about eight to 10 weeks, depending on how large group we have. And the last appeal that I have for today is for all of us. We all need that uh, sense of love and care for God. And I know that life sometimes come uh, against us and, and prevent us to spend the time with God and to experience that love. So my appeal for all of us today is to build our relationship to God so we can reflect that as mothers in whatever way we are, as church members and as the neighbors in our community. Let God bless us as we do so. Amen.